if you're a fragger, you shouldn't be scared of getting subbed out, you know, like, if you're actually, like, really good, then you should have confidence in your ability, like, your team will want to play you, you know, if you're, if you're actually the better player on your team, then your team will want to play you. If you're just, like, if you're holding on to, like, your reputation for your, like, spot on your team, then you should be scared, you know. Hey, this is Zento from Esports Heaven, and I have here with me Optic Gaming's jungler, Acadian. Now, you guys just had a win uh, after a while. You've been on like this loss streak. How does it feel as far as, like, is this a mental reset for you and your team now? Um, I mean, I, I just think for a while there, for like the last three weeks, uh, three or four weeks, yeah. Yeah, three weeks I would say. Ever since um, we had the zero two week where we were playing funnel and Gate was playing, I felt like the team was uh, kind of slumping a little bit in practice and in just our level of play and stuff. So practice went better this week, uh, just in terms of like how we ran it, types of things we were doing, types of things we were saying, and winning feels pretty good because uh, yeah, I just said it feels good to like practice better and then actually get the win at the end of the day. So. Relieving, well, relieving for sure. <laughs> well, on on that note, you know, it, it sounds like you guys have had some trouble in practice. And when you do have trouble in practice or when it also gets to on stage and you have trouble, how do you, like, not flame your teammates, basically? <laughs> like, do, does it get difficult to function in a space to where you're losing constantly and it's just like, well, maybe it's not all me you know like how, how do you manage that um well i mean i think the first thing is to like uh i think for for a while there during practice we just uh we were developing like a pretty bad culture i think where like we would go into our day and everyone's like automatically depressed and thought we were gonna lose and then we would like just zero six or something in scrims and then everyone would just go play solo queue, run it down a little bit, and then, or like maybe not run it down, it depends, depends on the player, you know, but, uh, and then we would just go to the next day, 06 again, and then nobody would like talk about it, there wasn't, there wasn't, there wasn't like any big team meetings, and then I think eventually it was just like, all right, this really is unacceptable, you know, like we must change this, and um, I think that just has to come from like the players and the coaches, the org, you know, can't accept, can't accept like just getting completely like owned every time you practice, and when you play LCS, so I think we just, just yeah, just try to step up, just try to try harder, I guess, um, in, in terms of the way we're practicing and the way we are playing on stage. So, so I saw your vlog uh, a couple days ago, right? Uh, yeah. And it seems like every time you do a vlog, you win the game after. So maybe you should start doing that more. I don't know. <laughs> do I? <laughs> yeah, I th I thought you won the last time that you did a vlog uh, in Spring Split. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't really think it has that much correlation, but yeah. I don't know. I just, I didn't feel like vlogging for a long time because, like, I'm really not just trying to go on my vlog and just be like, yeah, I'm real sad. We're just, we're losing. I suck. We suck. You yeah, know, like, it, it gets boring, that, right? Like, I really am not trying to say that. So, uh, I just, did, I didn't want to put anything out for a long time because it was just a frustrating time. It's a very hard time for me as a, as a person, you know, like mentally and just in general, uh, it's it was hard for me for a while, but then I just decided like, I don't want to, like I, I have people that are like very clearly like fans of me and like, and they like that I actually talk to them, you know? So I felt kind of bad for not doing it and I was just being lazy, so. Uh, so, well, let me ask you something then. Are you are you satisfied with your career thus far? Because it, it seemed like you were a little bit down in your vlog. Um, so are you satisfied where you're at as far as like absolutely being in the not. LCS? no not even close i'm extremely dissatisfied with how my career has gone so far um it's not really it's not what i envisioned i always envisioned myself as uh not just like <clears throat> not really just like an elite player i guess it's it more just like more of an elite person like i wanted to always try to be uh just good the best, or like right? yeah be the best yeah i don't know i'm just very i'm very like driven to become awesome or like try to become good at or what I would think is good at whatever I'm doing you know so that that definitely spilled over into league and um since it's it's it is a team game too you know and things play into it like 
how your relationships are with your teammates, how you work with people, uh, how all this stuff plays in like together, I guess. Um, and for me, I guess it's just been like, I really don't like seeing that, that like when people say like, yeah, Kadian's pretty good, but like this teammate sucks or this teammate sucks. Like, I really don't like seeing that shit because I feel like when I've seen, um, like when you see great players, I think they, they like elevate the level of their, their yeah, teammates too. Team, and like, right. I'm definitely, that's like, I think that's kind of like the next level, you know, I really have to like think about that. Um, <clears throat> I have a very like dominating personality. Uh, so it's, I have to be like careful that I don't run over my teammates and they still have like individuality and stuff. And, and like, I think that's been a big focus for me this season has just been, um, or I guess this year, I've, I've just had more of a leadership like role on optic and like if you're a leadership of like you know or if you're like kind of a leader of like the ninth like template team or bottom bottom of the barrel team that's not playing very well it's like <sighs> it's hard just, to look yourself I, in the mirror yeah it's of. not what i wanted so yeah basically i have one of those moments where it's like look i'm i'm shitting the bed really hard and uh like i don't want to you, you can't just sit there and like complain you can't be like ah oh, my, my situation's so bad you know like that's mm-hmm. not that's not how i became a pro that's not like how i got here to the position i'm in even like so that's not how i got to lcs right like when i was like gold and solo queue or silver and solo queue i wasn't just like oh, i'm so bad sucks you know yeah. i was like i'm so bad how do i get better so like that's that's kind of the way i think about it right now it's like yeah we might be like bottom of the barrel but like how do i improve because my con like, dude i definitely like Sometimes in practice, sometimes in LCS, I definitely like hardcore run it down. So I really gotta like lower those levels. Like, I, like if you could see some of the shit that I've done, like, oh, you know, man. like, uh, yeah, I don't know. But, <laughs> well, but, to, but to answer your question, no, I'm not satisfied. We'll we'll keep the scrim results yeah. to to the scrims, and and yeah. we'll just let the stage games speak for themselves. That's, yeah. <laughs> so you you kind of talked about being a leader, but. One thing that I find interesting is the difference between a pro player's personality, like Acadian's personality, versus Matt's. Do you find that there's an easy separation between the two, or do you find that it's kind of healthy to try and develop something like that, to where you're Acadian on stage or you're Acadian on stream, but when you're time with your friends, you know, things like that, it, it doesn't fully translate over because at one instance you could have that affect your entire life say when you're on a losing streak suddenly you're you know not as happy or you're quick to anger you know just in regular life so do you think that's a good kind of separation and have you had that type of chance to do that separation um well i think for a long period of time when i was in challenger uh I would say Acadian was just Matthew Higginbotham, right? And then, <laughs> I feel like this has happened to a decent amount of people, but like I joined LCS as, as me, right? Nobody knew, nobody knew who the hell I was. Like I was just a hard random from NA solo queue playing on Echo Fox with like Looper and Froggen. And I did very well at the beginning of like, when I first joined the split and then everyone was like, oh my God, this kid's so insane, right? And then I suddenly was like, nah, but I need to like, I gotta be like more, uh, what's the word like I, I wanted to be like more admirable than I truly was at the time like yeah. I wanted to be like yeah. a cooler person than I was or some shit so I was like I hella faked it for like I don't know <laughs> a little bit for sure um but I think I think in the last year the like my real personality and my my like uh online persona persona Acadian they've they've really kind of like come a lot closer I would say like uh I'm just more comfortable with it, you know, like, I don't, I don't think for a while I fully accepted that I was even an LCS player, because, like, I don't know, man, when you come from, like, the real world, and, like, I, I just, I would have friends just be like, oh, you're, you're, like, a video game player, like, it's a job, like, you know, it's like, it's like that sort of thing, so I didn't want to fully accept that, like, yeah, I was an LCS, right, like, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just doing this for now, you know, like, that was my thought last year, was I'm just doing it, and then I'm gonna stop and, like, go do some real shit, you know, Yeah. Um, but I think this year I've really kind of just... I'm 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 definitely doing this. Uh, it's my job. It's my life. So I'm gonna really like buy in and accept that like it's what I'm doing. So I, I think also too like that's why it's not like I've been owning an LCS or anything like that like the whole time. Um, and I think that's a lot of people can really relate to that when I'm just like I'm just talking about my experiences. You know, I'm just like I'm just saying some some like real shit instead of like yeah. 
I don't know. I just I, I I try to like with my vlogs, for example. Last year, it was if you look at them, I was just talking about the games and stuff. And then I think this year, I'm just talking more about like just my life and how I feel in general. So yeah, yeah. So speaking to that, uh, you had said you uninstalled Twitter for a little bit. <laughs> like, so is that because of there's like this big social pressure for pros? Is it really that difficult to handle like this? this public presence that fans demand of you? Nah, okay, so I, there is a side of that where like people on the internet are assholes, like you guys really gotta cut that shit out, like it's, it's pretty <laughs> bad, but um, <clears throat> I would definitely say for me, the reason why I did it was I just realized that I would like, all right, this is what I do, right? I'm doing anything and then I just like whip my phone out, I press my home button and then I just, I look at my Twitter and I press, I like scroll up and then I read all the new shit, I go down until like I would I would see like all the old stuff and then I just keep pressing home and refreshing like over and over again. Like I'm literally just wasting so much time looking at Twitter, you know. I was just I don't know, I was always doing. It. I I look at Twitter and then Instagram. Like, I don't know, it's just it's sort of like a community and I just didn't want to I was just wasting a lot of time pretty much and I was like, damn, I really shouldn't do this. So Yeah, that's why I just I I honest or I didn't honest well I didn't uninstall it. I just unfollowed everyone. But I realized, like, I would remind it would remind me every time I opened my Twitter app and I pressed home and there was nothing new. I was like, holy, like, I unfollowed everyone. There's no, there's, <laughs> this isn't interesting anymore, you know. So, uh, yeah. Okay. It. <laughs> well, let's let's switch back to the the game and the team for a little bit. Um, there's been a lot of substitutions within entire LCS this season. Uh, how is it just looking at the landscape of players and seeing people subbed out? Does that get you kind of nervous and does that get your entire team nervous for getting subbed out? I mean, if you're a fragger, you shouldn't be scared of getting subbed out. You know, like if you're actually like really good, then you should have confidence in your ability. Like your team will want to play you. You know, if you're if you're actually the better player on your team, then your team will want to play you. If you're just like, if you're holding on to like your reputation for your like spot on your team, then you should be scared, you know. So, I think it just it just like really holds people to their play, you know. Like how, how you play on the weekends dictates whether or not you get to play moving forward, you know. Like you see, I think uh, what's the name, Adrian? Like he has a reputation, right? He's played very well in the past, and yeah. I think he. I don't really know what happened with Echo Fox. Maybe there's internal issues or something. Well, there's definitely internal issues, but uh, he. He got subbed out for Fang, and then now I think he's not even playing for the academy anymore. Like I don't know what happened, but uh, I, I, I honestly I can't like really say because I don't know. But yeah, the way it appeared, course. the way it appeared is like yeah. he's underperforming. He gets replaced, and he's still underperforming, and he's like not playing anymore or something. That's just the way it appeared to me. Um, I think it's good to have like it. Just, well, it really depends because like lifestyle wise, it sucks ass to just like you really can't slip. You know, like if you slip. Your, your like opportunity like maybe if you slip and then this other guy like Sunscaren right he slipped Blabber has a chance to play if Blabber Blabber did okay today if he does well tomorrow maybe Blabber will keep playing maybe Sven will never have a chance to play on C9 for the rest of the season you know it just really you cannot slip you must play well every single every single week and whether that's a good thing or not for will really depend on the player or the person I think so well it, it seems like players now have this new kind of pressure that didn't exist in the LCS before because you have all your academy players and whatnot. So I, I think it's because um, franchising is gone. So teams are or franchising is here. Sorry. So teams are more uh, more ready to just switch it up, try new things. You know, see how it goes instead of like C9, for yeah. example. I think C9 would never have made the moves that they made this season um, if franchising was not around. So I think that's a big thing. Is there's a lot more strength to the orgs. There's a lot more power that is given to the organizations and less power to the players. So how how that's going to play out? No clue. So yeah, definitely been uh, been noticing that within the landscape. Um, well, that's all I really have for you. I appreciate the interview this time, and uh, this has been Azento from Esports Heaven and uh, Acadian from Optic Gaming. Yeah, thank you. I assume if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed the content. So if you did, subscribe and also check out my other content that's more analytical and opinionated. But otherwise, keep it locked at esportsheaven.com, and I'll see you next time. Peace.